What's up guys, it is IRGT85, hope everyone is having a great Wednesday, but we got some video game news to cover, we got a couple Sony stories to go over, yes, I do talk about Sony stuff on this channel, and we will wrap things up with a very strange Nintendo story that I, I, I just I just don't understand it, so if this is your first time on the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button, be sure to like and share the video, but without any further ado, let's talk about what's going on in the world of video games, and like I said, let's talk about some Sony stuff. So the PlayStation 5, which just came out last year, of course, is actually getting a revised model already. Now, this isn't anything like a Nintendo Switch OLED or a Nintendo Switch Lite or anything like that, but it is interesting that this is even happening. Now, this involves the PlayStation 5 Digital Edition, which I wonder what the sales are on that. That's something we haven't really heard about how the PS5 is selling with the digital version versus the physical version that will allow you to play your disc-based games on your PlayStation 5. Obviously, a lot of these companies are wanting to move to an all-digital model, but I feel like if these systems aren't as successful especially with the price cuts comparative to the physical editions of the systems maybe we can prolong this another generation or two which I'm very hopeful for but yes like I said the PlayStation 5 is indeed getting a redesign for the digital model and this is coming to us from the official Japanese PlayStation website now what's interesting about this is it looks exactly the same there's only really two differences happening with this redesign first off is that 10 ounces of its total weight are going to be removed so it's 300 grams so it's like Okay, it's a little bit lighter. I mean, this isn't a portable system or anything like that. Now, the PlayStation 5 is a bit of a heavy system. It's kind of a beast. So I guess shaving off 10 ounces is kind of a good thing. And the other main thing is that it uses a different screw for the base of the system. Instead of having to use the screw that is available on the current ones, this just looks like it's a little bit of an easier screw. I don't know. I just kind of chucked that off to the side when I got my PlayStation 5, and I put my PlayStation 5 on the floor like a Neanderthal because, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't want to mess around with bases and things like that but those are the only changes happening with this so a lot of people are wondering well why are they even making this change with the PlayStation 5 digital edition and the only thing I could think of is potentially maybe there's different parts in it that are cutting down on the cost of manufacturing this system maybe Sony's trying to make a little bit of a profit on this system if they aren't making a profit or if they are making a profit maybe making a little bit more of a profit maybe they're using some different plastics some different materials going on with this and that's why we're seeing 10 ounces shaved off of its total weight but beyond that it's really a mystery to me obviously it's going to have the same sort of innards we would expect it to have because i mean it still needs to play playstation 5 games on it so yes the playstation 5 is getting a subtle quiet redesign what do you think of this do you think we'll see more playstation 5 redesigns like a playstation 5 slim or a playstation 5 pro no not a nintendo switch pro let me know what you think of this in the comment section down below and whether or not you got a playstation 5 digital edition physical edition or neither Next up, Kickstarters are a great way for a small company to get some funding, but let's be realistic. Over the years, a lot of companies have taken money on Kickstarter and then sort of ran away with the money, never fulfilling promises, never really doing anything with that money to create something that they were supposed to create with gamers in mind. And honestly, I've kind of been burned by a few Kickstarters before, so I'm kind of over the whole thing. So for me to talk about a Kickstarter, it actually has to be something involved with people that I actually know and I actually trust. And right now there is a Kickstarter going on that I definitely want to bring to your guys' attention because not only is this a reputable company, but it's a pretty cool product. Now, Retro Fighters is actually making a brand new controller. Now, if you've heard of Retro Fighters before, that means you're a longtime viewer of this channel. We've talked about their products before, such as the N64 Brawler controller, which I use all the time on my N64. It's so much more comfortable than the standard N64 controller. Of course, they also did a Dreamcast controller about two years ago, I believe, but now they have a brand new controller coming out for the PlayStation 1 and the PlayStation too and the big draw to this controller is that it is a wireless controller so this is the Retro Fighters Defender, which is a PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 wireless controller. And as you can see, they've already met their Kickstarter goal of 20,000. Really, when Retro Fighters does a Kickstarter, it's just for manufacturing costs. I consider this to be more of a pre-order situation, more so than an actual Kickstarter where you're gonna have to wait and wonder if this is actually going to come to fruition. But this is a really cool controller because I mean, look at it. It's a freaking wireless PS1 slash PS2 controller and it looks super, super comfy. 
now of course they go over some of the details of it with the auto input function turbo functionality of course it's compatible with the PlayStation 1 and the PlayStation 2 and a wireless range of over 30 feet and like I said retro fighters makes great controllers I use my retro fighters uh, n64 brawler controller all the time it's the only way I play my n64 so I have no problems talking about these guys and giving them a little bit of a plug we can see the controller here I mean good looking controller nice simple Ooh, that black look at that black for your PlayStation 2 little translucent colors as well and it of course has a wireless dongle that you plug into your PlayStation 1 or PlayStation 2 in order for this to read and this is going to be a really awesome controller we can see the timetable here they're planning for a January launch I feel like they will probably make that like I said this is a very reputable company and we could see here on the side how much it costs 34 bucks and you get your controller like that's 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 a good deal like that's that's not breaking the bank or anything like that there's a couple different tiers you can get two controllers you can get three controllers you can get four controllers an ultimate bundle that comes with a bunch of other stuff that you may or may not want depending on how many people you have in your household that play your PlayStation 2 or PlayStation 1 but I think this is a really cool product this is something that I have no problem backing I have no problem giving them some shine because like I said a very reputable company all their products that I have checked out before in the past have been absolutely top-notch so if you're still playing your PlayStation 1 or PlayStation 2 which you probably are because you can't play that stuff on the PlayStation 5 or anything like that this is definitely a great controller to check out I feel and definitely worth your buck so if you're looking for something definitely check their Kickstarter campaign out I'll have a link to it in the description box no this isn't a sponsored spot or anything like that I do nice things once in a while because I am a nice person I am a nice person and finally Nintendo what the hell is wrong with you what the hell is wrong with you you have to be the weirdest video game company in the entire world some things you do I absolutely love some things you do I absolutely hate some things you do I'm sort of indifferent to or kind of middle of the road and one of those middle of the road things of course is the Nintendo switch online service it's something we've talked about time and time again on this channel but it's really something that just annoys the hell out of me because Nintendo is just so weird with this that it really doesn't make sense of course one of the main draws to the Nintendo switches online service are the additions of NES and Super NES games and these started out as pretty cool stuff it was good stuff people liked it and then of course as time has gone on the games have just gotten well worse and worse and worse just some absolute head scratchers and when you look at the library of the NES when you look at the library of Super Nintendo especially the Super Nintendo think of all those awesome RPGs that came out for the Super Nintendo and then you can't play any of them on your Nintendo switch it's just like what the hell man add some better games to the service of course this was something that used to be added every month you would get new games and then as time have gone on it's been like two months or three months and no games oh here's some games yeah here's some games of course you can make the whole case about how Nintendo needs to add more systems to it as well something like the Game Boy Advance Nintendo actually put out a tweet today talking about Metroid Fusion and everyone in the replies was like hey I would love to play Metroid Fusion but I don't have it on the Game Boy Advance it's way too expensive and I can't buy it on my Nintendo switch so I guess I'm screwed or I'm gonna have to pirate the game well last night Nintendo announced some new games coming to the Nintendo switch online server only SNES games and it's just like why why, why why these games how did you pick these games let's go over the list of games together shall we now these games will be available starting on July 28th and there's some uh, some weird stuff man so we got claymates which is probably the one game you might have heard on this list no it has nothing to do with clay fighters but it was an interplay game and I feel like interplay at that time was trying to make the clay stuff like its own sort of thing you know have clay fighters have claymates as a side-scrolling 2d action game and things of that nature so they were trying to like create their own brand within the clay universe and just have sort of offshoots of it this was the only game they ended up making I believe this is available on the Evercade interplay collection so I'm pretty sure that I have played it on that before so yeah you know it's, it's not a bad game or anything like that but I don't think many people have fond memories of renting claymates at Blockbuster like these games are like the the games that you rented at Blockbuster because everything else was out on a Friday night next up we have Jelly Boy it's an exclusive platformer that only released in Europe in 1995 and it's like like who, who's heard of jelly boy like these are the North American games you know I, I don't feel like we've reached the end of the Super Nintendo games that we could add to the Nintendo switch online service to the point of where we're adding in exclusive games that only released in Europe and they probably only released in Europe for a good reason now yes there are some games that end up being region locked or whatnot that are really good games but I just have a sneaking suspicion that jelly boy was not one of those games and the other game that we're getting yes we're getting three Super Nintendo games no NES games bomb 
Bomboozle! It's a puzzle game and there's a bomb and zoozles and you have to defuse bombs in a short amount of time. It's like, what are we what are we doing here? Who the hell is picking these games? I have joked time and time again that I feel like Nintendo just has a dart board and they're throwing random darts at the board and then whatever game it ends up hitting, that's the game they add to the Switch's online service because these games make absolutely no sense. Nobody is sitting there saying, shit, man, I really wish I could play Bomboozle on my Nintendo Switch. I don't want to play Metroid Fusion. I don't want to play Final Fantasy 4. I want to play Bomboozle. That's what's going to bring me into my Nintendo Switch and make me play it more. Nintendo, you need, you need to get this together. This is ridiculous. This is a service that people are paying for. If these are the types of games you're going to add, bring back the freaking virtual console at this point in time. Let us be able to buy the games that we want to buy. And yes, we'll have to buy them for the third time, of course, because we bought them on the Wii. We bought them on the Wii U. You might have even bought some of them on the 3DS, so this could be a fourth time for you. But at least that system worked better. It was a better system system because you had the bangers on it you had the games that you wanted to play and if you wanted to play those games you would buy them you weren't relying on a service that randomly adds games every couple of months that most of the games you're probably not going to be that interested in so please nintendo fix this do something with this this is one of the weakest areas of the nintendo switch you're selling hand over fist with the nintendo switch you play with the nintendo switch online and there's so many drawbacks to it there's not basic things on this anyways and you know i'm able to look past the basic things because I have a phone, I have a tablet, I can do things on my computer with that, but to have these crappy games on here that nobody really cares about, you just really piss people off, and looking at the video views and the like and dislike ratio on your YouTube video right now, it seems like most people aren't too happy with this. Yes, I dislike the video because I am a petty person, but of course, these are coming out on July 28th, and I guess I'm going to play them for you guys. I guess I'm going to play them. Alrighty, so that's going to do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to let me know what you think of everything in the comments section down below. Are you excited to play Bomboozle and Jelly Boy on your Nintendo Switch? Because I'm sure as hell not. What do you think about the PlayStation 5 redesign? And of course, the Retro Fighters PlayStation 1 slash PlayStation 2 controller. Are you a retro gaming fan? Does this tickle your fancy? Will you be picking up one of these? Because really, I, I really recommend the Retro Fighter stuff. They make great products. And as always, thank you guys for watching this video. If you are new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button and be sure to like and share the video. We are on the road to 400,000 subscribers and I love each and every one of you, even the people who hate watch me. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.